Hello, I'm Peter Underwood and this is News from the Water. The cost of floating your boat. Let's start with a look at the cost of keeping a boat on the major waterways in this country. Both the Environment Agency and the Canal and River Trust have now announced their pricing for 2022 and onwards and there is what on the face of it seems an interesting degree of similarity. Wherever you float your boat, you're likely to pay just over a thousand pounds a year for a 60 foot vessel, but the value you receive varies widely. Canal and River Trust will license an 18 meter narrow boat for 1,067 pounds, with a surcharge of 5% if your vessel is wider than 2.1 meters, bringing the total to 1,120 for those vessels. The Environment Agency, operating on the freshwater Thames, bases charges on area, not length. So an 18 metre narrowboat costs £788, but a full width wide beam over £1,500 for the same length. And the Environment Agency's Anglian waters don't have additional charges for width, and any vessel of 18 metres will cost £1,091, although from next year you'll pay another £100 for the Anglian Pass, which enables you to use the previously free waters controlled by the middle level commissioners. Now, after some furious boater feedback, the Environment Agency abandoned plans to standardise charges across its regions after being unceremoniously told by Anglian water boaters, amongst others, that it already provided very poor value for money. It also rowed back the 2022 increase in charges from 6% to 4%, with another 4% in 23 and another 2% in 2024. But the value for money in terms of the miles available for boating being offered certainly varies widely, with the Canal and River Trust boater getting nearly two miles of waterway for every pound in licence fees. By contrast, boaters on Anglian waters just get a quarter of a mile for a pound, with lots of unconnected waters where there's even less room and few facilities. An 18 metre narrow boat on the Thames gets just 0.17 miles of waterway per pound spent, whilst the owners of wide beams of the same length get 0.08 miles for a pound, once again with very few facilities. Now the fact that the Environment Agency can't even find an acceptable system of charging to apply across its, all its waterway regions says much about the complexity of this issue, with some boaters on short waterways, like the River Ancone, with nowhere else to go except into the tidal waters of the Humber Estuary, and even the Canal and River Trust making special arrangements for boaters who only use rivers or those on isolated waterways like the Monmouth and Brecon Canal. So, small wonder there are those who argue for charging of the, on the basis of use, but that would benefit marina-based boats and nobody else. And there are others that make a case for charges on the basis of miles available to a boat, which would mean wide beams paying less and perhaps narrow boats paying more. So complicated, isn't it? And just to make it worse, there's no guarantee it would be any easier if the Environment Agency waters moved to CRT. A virtual blizzard of online promotion. Now, the COVID crisis seems to have accelerated Canal and River Trust's online activity to unprecedented levels with CEO Richard Parry claiming it now has a large-scale following. Our social media and other channels now exceed over a million followers, and we will need that growth to continue. It has certainly produced a remarkable number of videos, ranging from full-scale corporate videos like the epics from the annual general meeting and the Richard Parry annual message to boaters, through to the most recent series of four films on the Ladies of Llangollen, which was more of a cultural production, set around the Horseshoe Falls, the town of Llangollen, and linked with the Pontus World Heritage Site. 
There are simple educational films for children and even some specialist virtual reality productions designed for those with VR headsets. A rough estimate suggests six or seven hours of material in just the past year, some educational, some focused on charitable initiatives, others on the campaign to per persuade civil servants and politicians to continue the Trust's grant or perhaps increase it, all on the basis that it plays such an invaluable role in both keeping people feeling better and in protecting the environment. And not all of these videos are produced by CRT. Some are made in conjunction with outside arts and community projects, but all are reasonably competently made and, in total, the whole thing has created a surprisingly effective social media campaign, dealing with multiple aspects of the Trust's newly self-created role of being much more than a navigation authority. The variety of the work is impressive and it gives CRT a way of reflecting and growing that wider remit by making something for almost every audience, even boaters, simply because they're interested in anything waterways. <clears throat> Take a look at some of the material, just part of the equivalent of four feature films produced this year. What can you feel? Can you feel the breeze through your hair? Take a deep inhalation. As our annual report states, Spending time outdoors has huge benefits to our physical and mental well-being. And there are many studies that repeatedly prove being amongst nature offers numerous health benefits, including... Well, there are questions we've not been able to answer. What has this massive effort cost the trust when the average price for corporate videos uh, of this type is around £1,500 per produced minute? That means a very approximate figure might be over half a million pounds for this year's production. But it's impossible to find any figures for a marketing budget in the annual report never mind separating the social media campaign from all the other PR and advertising activities. And how effective has it been? Well, we know Richard Parry claims a million social media followers. Well, the Trust's YouTube channel has 9,000 subscribers and its Facebook page 461,000 followers although it also uses other social media and spreads the video content across a number of outlets. The more you look at this body of work, the more you conclude that even if it did cost half a million or more of the Trust's £200 million plus budget, it's been money well spent. HVO set to spread. Several boatyards around the canal system are already planning to switch to the greener HVO diesel and Canal and River Trust has begun a trial of the fuel in its workboats. CRT says the rapid adoption of greener fuels such as HVO would reduce carbon emissions from the running of the existing boat engines across the system in the short term while not requiring changes in either engines or the supply infrastructure. Now the fuel is currently being trialled by CRT in its litter boat in Birmingham and other craft operating out of it Port. Initial reports indicate that the craft is working well 
and there'll be a gradual rollout across across the whole trust fleet from April 2022, or what's left of it. But CRT says that will coincide with the withdrawal of commercial red diesel, and that's puzzled most boaters who are well aware the government has said that red diesel should no longer be used in commercial plant, such as excavators and dumper trucks, but the current system of using red diesel for marine and boating use remains the same. And CRT is added to that confusion by saying the removal of the red diesel subsidy from fuel for propulsion has disproportionately affected boaters, particularly those who live aboard. The Trust says that the government now has an opportunity to offer tax incentives for greener fuels, making fuel duty the same or lower than standard white diesel. But as far as most boaters can recall, there's been no subsidy for diesel used for propulsion for many years. Curiouser and curiouser. Now, that's probably the last one for this year. So, can I wish you all a happy Christmas? Thanks for watching and uh, have a great new year.